I'm the breathing guy. I will train you to locate, generate, activate core key energy in physical activity. This video is Tennis Serve Mechanics, exploring the hips and how they influence the shoulder rotation and playing your game involved. So let me get, uh, state one thing. The hips are the foundation of all movement. Start from there. If your hips are out of a placement, it's going to throw everything off. So understanding that is the beginning. Now, how do you set your hips and why should you set your hips the way I suggest? One, let's start off. What happens when you don't set your hips? Just, just standing there normally and involved. And when you do stand there, you'll find this area down here is weak. You, ca you can't move it. Your hips are slightly tilted backwards. Your tailbone is slightly up, elevated. So understanding that is normal. Now, I want you to practice it because we've got to do a contrast between sensations of doing it with your hips one way, like, you're, like you are right now, and the way I suggest, and see if it affects the movement, your shoulder rotation, how you do things. So let's uh, start off. So I'll get in your form and just slowly move your hand up, and I mean slowly, because I want you to feel how it makes your shoulders feel like. What does it make your back feel like? And as you build stages. So the whole idea of going slow is to let your mind focus on that area and feel what it is. So you feel like the pressure, the tension, you feel your shoulders a little bit. It heightens the sensitivity. Two, when you bring it up, always bring up the ball with this finger right here and your thumb. So it's like these three fingers are pulling up, throwing the ball up and ball. That's what you want. This is a little finger ergonomics. On there. So go up, go up, go up, hold it, and feel how your shoulders, your right through here feels, and bring it back down. So this is the state. Now, see by changing your hips, placement, how it works, but how you do it matters. This is a uh, movement for breathing. This is for core breathing. Because when you tip your hips a certain way, you're going to move, you're going to be able to activate your lower core. You didn't know the core is divided in two parts, upper and lower. Lower is below the belly button. So slightly tip your hips forward a little bit, just a little, and then push your belly button to inhale out like a bellows and out and down. It's like at a 45 degree. So up here, when you push your belly down to from here out, You'll find your back will actually want to make your straight up. Uh, as your stomach goes out, your glutes come up. This area here comes up. So pull them up a little bit as your stomach goes out. Now squeeze them a little bit. Now pause, raise your hand up and feel. You can drop so your shoulders can come looser and loose them with over practice. They can come so fluid you wouldn't believe. They'd be like just flowing like butter. What? Uh, but slowly move your hand up slowly, and find you have no pressure across here, no tension. Maybe your arm is thought. You can actually drop your shoulder down halfway. Drop your shoulder. Train your upper body to be fluid when this is formed. Here's the rule. If you don't use the lower core as a source of your strength and energy, you're going to use the, the shoulders, this area up here, as the main force of hitting anything. And you're going to strain your shoulders and you're going to hurt your shoulders in time. So the whole idea of setting your hips forward and then push your stomach up, pull up, squeeze. And then when you do that, your hips are stable and now come up. And even when you do this, come around, see how your arms and fluid. Remember, I said in the first video, shoulder rotation, use this finger. So you just pull this finger back to here as you're going forward. Basic is just go here and hit. But when you're really good, when you get it down, it's a technique, mind you. It's as fast as you move your hand back, is as fast as the front hand goes forward. Though that is a technique in itself. So understanding how the hips affect. In fact, let your arch go back again. And as I come up like this, you'll feel it. And then try to swing your racket around slow. Stop halfway. Just feel your tension and see how you're just trying to force it with your shoulder. But, so reset your hips. 
Inhale out, tighten right here a little bit, and then uh, pull up on the glutes at the same time. This comes out, this comes up, tight, shoulder comes down. Those are the three points. Now slowly move and see how there's no, how you can just, the hand can just whip through. That's the key reason to set the hips. Remember I said, hips are the foundation of movement. When you have your hips like this, even going sideways tight, if you have an arch going, it's harder. But if you have your hips titted and have this slightly taut and breathe from here, you can move easier. Less chance of injury, less more range of motion, and then you're faster. You'll be slightly more fluid coming through. So that permits the transfer of force from your core area, using your feet even, to your hands to go into the racket. That's the advantage, but truly understand, play with what I say. I want you to feel the difference. I just don't tell you to do something. You have to feel the difference. Once you get the difference, then you can amplify the difference in time with practice. That's the whole idea. Having fluid shoulders, upper body, up here, fluid. And what you want is the force of your actions at the base of the shoulder blades down. That's where you transmit, but you don't want up here because that limits your range of motion. For rotation in fact try this even if you if you come up like this have the arch have this weak just make this soft just stand there naturally and if you try to come around and try to go um even if you put your hand here forget your shoulder see the shoulder movement and separation between the hips and shoulders very marginal if at all and if you even do this the separation between hips and shoulder is marginal but if you just uh, even doing this, I want you to do it very slow, even doing it this way, and feel the pressure. But now set your hips, tip hips slightly. Now breathe from here, tighten here, drop shoulders, soften shoulders. And then do the same and see how there's nothing, no resistance to your movement up in your upper body. The whole idea of not having resistance to your movement in the upper body is the reason why you work the core area, the lower core area, have your hips set. Now, to back up what I say, if you go to gymnasts, especially the female gymnasts, you can really see it. If you watch them, they can arch their back really a lot. But before they make a run, that tumbling run, they take a breath and they set their hips, they actually move, especially when they're on the uh, beam. You, they really set, you can watch how their spine comes straight. The whole idea of not having your coccyx, let's say you it out, because that one, it's bent like this. You cannot use the core. It, here, it cannot tighten, move it. But as soon as you tip it under, then exhale. Pull the belly button in and down with your hips. This area gets activated. Now, if you're a little older, like over 40, this area is probably a little weak. So it's going to take, don't push it. Take a little bit. Anytime you try to overdo the core, your shoulders will tighten up to compensate. That's the key element. Only put as much pressure to the point where you don't engage the shoulders. People have a bad habit. They think, oh, the tighter I make this, when you do that, you have to train yourself. It's almost like stages. This is why I'm a trainer. I'm not a tennis pro or teaching that. that is, many people are very good at that. But when it comes to mechanics, internal mechanics, shaping the body, moving force through your body, that's my area of training. That's what separates me for other trainings. So always remember, before you do it, it's like getting down here. Before you go down, set your hips. Exhale going down. Then with your hip, inhale, push and feel it here. Push it out, pull up at the same time. This goes out, this comes up, shoulders come down. Tighten, exhale. You do that and do it slowly. Don't try it fast. Why do you think I'm back here for? Why not on a tennis court? Because I don't want you to do it on a tennis court. I need you to find a place that's comfortable so you can slowly feel all your movement with your hips like this. If you're not used to doing that, setting your hips this way and engaging the core down here, then you have to go to an area that you can go very slow and practice to get their mind, your mind to feel the sensations 
the difference between what you used to do and what you're doing now. Take your time, work the deal, and you become more fluid. The whole game, the whole goal, is to have a fluidity to uh, the uh, rotation of the shoulders. Now, on the hands, that's another story. For that, I'm going to I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to add one more point on the forehand. I've been watching, and it just drives me a little. Well, I don't like inefficiency. And on the forehand, look at the pro's left hand. And when they're hitting, when they're coming like this, what are they doing with their left hand? The left hand influences the right hand ability. They work in conjunction. I understand. That's why I teach when you're coming back, this comes forward at the same rate. So if you really want to really want to go fast, you can go fast, but you based on how fast you can pull your left hand to your shoulder. Not down here, especially not here. Why do you think people have to jump up? Jump up and they go way back like this. They put their hand here because they actually get forward motion by tilting the body, but not the rotation of the shoulders. You can't. You can't rotate. You can test it. And here, why? If the hand's here, the elbow's here, how can the shoulder go backwards? Not possible. That's why a lot, some of them, uh, like Frederick, I've seen him once in a while, he's not thinking. He'll actually bring his hand back here when he's uh, serving. But then he goes back to this. So you, the training there, you get used. But the lower core, setting your hips, is the key element to actually coming more fluid up on top, less possibility of injuries, more dynamic force through your body, especially with the breathing and developing the core down here with the piriformis muscle, to be precise. The piriformis muscle is the key, which is down here and runs through. You have to activate it. People don't understand how you can either do it intuitively or do it consciously. But if you engage your shoulders in any way, you take it away from your lower core. You, you just, you're all upper body, so the core is supporting the upper body instead of the co uh, core, you know, the, instead of the uh, upper body move, my mistake. The upper body is supporting the core instead of the core supporting the upper body. Understanding the difference. So if you don't use your core, you're going to use your shoulders. That's the simplest point of view. And why do you want to create the resistance to your movement to that level? All you're going to do is limit your ability to even hurt yourself. That's why people get so many shoulders in their, uh, shoulder troubles with other problems in tennis because they limit, because they're using their shoulders as their force and not the core. So this is Tennis Serve Mechanics, exploring hips setting, using core breathing to engage the front, the front part, the piriformis muscle, the glutes, and softening the shoulders. Those are the three things you do. And how you do it is like before you go down to serve, move your hips forward, inhale a little bit, then go down. You can inhale a lot more when you're coming up and pull your, as your hand goes up, pull the glutes up and squeeze and Those are just, uh, how can I say, tips. Play with what I say. Feel the sensation difference because your mind has to train, be trained to realize the difference and you want this way over that way. You decide. I'm just giving you some choices. Anyway, you have a go out and have a good game. This is Scott, the breathing guy, uh, signing off to the next video.